Thank you. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. So I was really happy to hear that uh, Georges was also doing a talk on hunting because I think it's a subject uh, that's, of course, from our organization near and dear to our hearts, but also doesn't get enough attention. Um, a little bit about animal rights. We operate primarily in, in uh, Netherlands and Belgium. We have four primary campaigns. Ban the yacht, which is ending hunting in all forms, ending an the use of animals in agriculture, uh, ending all the fur farms, and of course the import and export of animal skins and down and things like that. And um, you heard, if you heard Jen speak yesterday, ending the use of animals in all experimentation. Uh, and replacing them with uh, alternatives that are better for humans and of course better for animals. So we have a couple small teams. A lot of our team is here and you'll hear from them in a little while because I uh, put this together at the last minute <laughs> and um, they're gonna help me out a little bit. So here's a representative of some of our four themes and as we all know, we're here um, and I'd like to thank the organizers and all the volunteers who help uh, put this weekend together so we can all come together and, and share all of this information. So why is hunting an important topic? Um, it's the amount of devastation that 8 billion people are doing to this planet is, is ruining, it's killing wildlife, it's killing plant life. Um, we're changing the ecosystems and, and affecting biodiversity. So every little animal matters, and that's one of the mottos of our group Animal Rights, is every individual has a right to life and well-being, and we truly believe that every animal has a right to life and well-being. So hunting um, is not, a lot of focus goes on to animal agriculture because billions of animals are killed, but also hunting has an enormous effect on biodiversity, uh, not to mention the individual animals. Um, wildlife and ecosystems are vital to human life and um, of course the destruction of nature is as dangerous as climate change which is getting a lot of attention but also again we're talking about the individuals we're talking about species and um, family groups and coexisting so um, what do we mean by myths and truths? So anyone who wants to exploit an animal uh, or animals will go to great lengths. I'm sure we all have heard about this. Uh, we've heard stories, we've heard the complaints. We know the animal agriculture is completely, there's no transparency. They go to great lengths to try to justify and or hide it. So in many cases, these exploitations and cruelty have gone on so long, we've accepted and normalized them. So that's why you all are here and we all work so hard to, um, to put transparency, where the, the glass walls, as they would say. Hunting is one of them, and there are a lot of misconceptions around hunting. So today, these are what some of the things I want to discuss is some of the myths that the hunting and the pro-hunting groups uh, and the lobbyists put out there, and how we can best uh, um, discuss, have a discussion, how we can, how we can best um, combat their uh, pro-hunting arguments. So I'm going to do about 20, 25 minutes of talking, and then we'll try to share some, some information. We'll ask some questions. I've got a couple of folks here that will talk about some of the ethics of some of the topics and uh, that we'll bring up today. So I think we want to have some fun with this. So when Cecil the Lion was killed, as we know, there's a global outrage outcry. It was in every newspaper. Everybody was upset. People were writing and calling and social media. But every other day, when there's another lion or an elephant or a rhino, where's the outrage? When there's geese killed, uh, when there's foxes trapped, when there's wolves slaughtered, where's the outrage? So it's, it's up to us to keep these animals, to keep this industry in the news, in the media, to really keep it uh, visible what's happening to billions of animals uh, that are trying, just trying to survive along with us. So killing animals uh, hunting is called many different things. They call it conservation, management, tradition, hobby, culling, sport, protection and safety, harvesting and subsistence. Anybody know anything, any other things that they call it? It's all of these ways that they want to kill and hide, or they want to kill animals, but cover it up by calling it something else. It sounds nicer. 
So animals, of course, are killed uh, and hunted for many reasons. So protection of animal agriculture, non-native or invasive species for fun or sport. Uh, they think animals deserve to be killed for indigenous hunting and tradition, human-animal conflict, management, and fear. So there's so many other reasons that they go to, to um, uh, kill animals, that animals are proposed to be killed. Uh, if, an, if a bear comes into someone's uh, neighborhood and people are afraid of it because they've left food out or they were irresponsible, then they want to kill that bear. Wolves have, it, it, where we come from, wolves have just now, after um, hundreds of years, thousands of years, come back to uh, Netherlands and immediately there's a management group and we all know what hunting wildlife management means. It's, it's killing them. So of course the farmers, the politicians, they all get together uh, to talk about when, when do we get to kill them. So a lot of what we talk about it with our group is, is of course rights for animals. They deserve to live. So. Uh, humans don't get to exploit them. Humans don't get to decide who lives or who dies. So killing an innocent animals for self-gratification is no different from killing innocent people for self-gratification. But of course, a lot of people don't want to hear that. They don't like that, that comparison that humans and animals are, it, have an equal value. And so that's something that really we, we can really talk about maybe today. How do we present this? How do we, how do we have a discussion about that? How do we explain that animals are as valuable? If humans all went away, nature would take care of itself. Animals would thrive. And when you talk about um, hunters, uh, they talk about it's not just about killing the animal, but of course it's, it's stalking their prey and a lot of them don't do it themselves. They'll sit up in a in a, um, a tree stand all day and have fun, drink some beers with their friend. They'll go out in a four wheeler. They'll have a if they can afford it. They'll pay a lot of money to have a guide. Um, it's 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 uh, really unfortunate. So it's it's about they talk. It's about the the hunt and it's about stalking. But many of the hunters don't actually hunt. Or they don't stalk. They don't stalk their prey. They don't chase them. Uh, they just sit and wait. Uh, in some cases, in some countries, they can bait the animals and wait for them to come. Um, they'll put up cameras to know where the animals uh, walk through. So they do a lot of work to not do a lot of work to just be able to kill someone. So we do call it a war on wildlife because they think that's truly what it is. Um, and we've all seen the pictures. If we haven't seen it in person, uh, hunters use all sorts of cruel and horrifying methods in order to kill animals. Um, one of the arguments that we'll get to later is, is they talk about, yeah, this is natural, we've always done it, but the tools that we use these days, the ability we have, uh, not only the amount of people that we have, but the ability that we have to kill so many animals in such a short time is devastating on, on wildlife. So bow and arrow, high-powered shotguns, uh, all kinds of trapping, snares, baiting, drive hunts, night vision goggles so they can see them at night, hunt stands, dogs, and other animals to chase and capture them, and can hunts and hunt facilities. So a lot of these uh, hunters use long-range rifles. So again, they are just sitting and waiting. They know where the animals are, and they will just sit at a long distance, wait, and kill the animal, and go and get it. Um, lake old traps are some of the worst snares in the US. They're allowed to still use snares, which catches the animal by the neck, and it's a slow and horrible and painful death. Uh, and of course, a lot of other animals get trapped in leg hole traps uh, or the box traps. Other animals will come in there, and then they die a horrible death also. And as you can see in this little cartoon, of course, when they use the automatic rifles, they're just shooting these animals for fun. They are these, the animals' bodies are just destroyed. And these hunters, they work hard to justify taking someone else's life. Uh, they believe that anti-hunters like myself and all of you, we don't understand the natural world, that nature itself is cruel. So if other animals can kill, if a lion can kill a gazelle, then we can also. 
And so that's just part of the reasons and excuses and misconceptions. So here are just a few that I've come up with. And after this, I hope that we can have a discussion about um, other things that you've heard and how we can address some of these issues. And before I go into that, I want to talk about not just addressing them, but um, where do we address these issues? As you know, hunters on social media, there's a lot of hunting in politics. Hunters wield a lot of political power in some areas. It's really, it's really shocking. Um, and I think George talked a little bit about that earlier. And tomorrow we're doing another talk about hunt saps, and we'll talk about um, how we can uh, fight some of this. But we. These are arguments that we need to use on social media, even in my circles, our own friends uh, have a lot of misconceptions about, um, about hunting and what money goes back into conservation and um, uh, non-native species or invasive species, things like that. So how do we address that? If we go, if our, in our province or our local government um, proposes a, a call or a kill, how do we go to that meeting and have a discussion and say, here's why we should not do this? So that's some of the things that I want us to talk about today. So here, <laughs> I have a couple pages of, <laughs> of, these are all the things that I've heard. Um, hunting is therapeutic, it's really, it's, it's really unfortunate. And one little thing that we saw, I'm not sure if, it's, if it showed up in Europe yet, but in the US, they have um, a remote uh, like hunting for people who are handicapped so they can sit at home and go it's almost like a it's almost like a um, video game and there's a gun set up and they can use their joystick and sit and watch the cameras and when the animal comes they can kill it from the comfort of their own home it's really and it's supposed to be therapeutic um, subsistence hunting that's a big thing I want uh, um, one of my team members I'm gonna have him talk a little bit about that uh, later because that's a big thing and I hear that a lot uh, killing of predator animals, um, we have to protect, it's up to us to protect the balance, so we kill sea lions, we kill lions, we kill wolves, so we protect other, we claim to protect other animals by killing other animals, when really the impact, as we know, is human impact. Wild food, they claim, hunters claim, oh, we're just like you guys, uh, we don't like the animal agriculture, so we hunt and we eat it, and that's much, much better than animal agriculture, but I think we know that the truth is we're not all gonna survive off of uh, wild animals, and I think, again, George said yesterday, if we all ate wild animals, they would be gone in 18 days, 18 days. So we know people aren't eating lions, they're not eating bears, they're not eating elephants, they're not eating wolves, they're not eating coyotes or raccoons. Um, it's nonsense. Um, hunting reduces disease, Invasive or non-native species are, can be damaging to the ecosystem and diversity. Hunters claim they devise, they are the ones that devise many laws, ethical guidelines, and conservation rules to preserve animals for the rest of our existence. Uh, and it's also because they can hunt without animals. Human-animal conflict is a danger to human. As we all know, the, uh, the human um, safety, health and safety, trumps everything. We, we put ourselves above everything else. Uh, hunters are conservation conservationists. Hunters love animals. Love that one. Um, hunting keeps a natural balance. All animals hunt. It's natural. We have always done it. Um, it's an extension of our predatory instincts. We keep uh, prey animals from overpopulating and suffering uh, starvation and disease. Again, we are top of the food chain, so we're justified to kill them. Animals are not left injured. Hunters are responsible and ethical. Hunting is necessary to protect agriculture, the environment from overpopulation and pests. Hunting provides employment and revenue to poor areas. Hunting is culture and tradition, sport, fun, pleasure, raises funds for natural spaces and protects health and integrity of species and ecosystems. So these are just a few that I've personally heard. I'm sure you guys have heard uh, probably even more than that. So what I'm gonna do quickly is touch on some of uh, the, the talking points that I use and then um, there's a couple of parts that I'm gonna call on uh, my colleagues, <laughs> Willem and Erwin, to talk a little bit about the ethics because there are some pieces that, that are really difficult for us to explain. So hunting keeps a natural balance and keeps prey animals from overpopulating. Um, hunting destroys natural predators. We know we take out all of the, um, all of the top predators and what's left are, are the prey animals and their populations just explode. 
Um, Yellowstone is a perfect example, but I think we can see it everywhere. Um, and we boost the populations of prey animals, such as elk, moose, uh, deer, caribou, birds, because we wipe out the predators. And this is in order for people to be able to hunt them. And this is really an incredible thing that, that a hunting, um, so few hunters have such a big uh, uh, influence on what happens to our wildlife. All animals hunt, it is natural, we've always done it. So we've always done a lot of things in the past that we no longer continue doing. And as technology and our population increases, the damage we do is more. And we have developed other food sources. We don't need to eat them. We've developed other sources for clothing. We don't need to wear them. Um, and of course, hunters are different from natural predators. Uh, as you can see, technology gives hunters an advantage. We don't see hunters targeting this small, sick, and old individual, which is what happens in nature. Left, nature left to its own devices, the predators will naturally call the sick, the weak, the old, which keeps the prey animals healthy and strong. So we're reversing evolution. The population becomes smaller and weaker and actually does uh, promote more disease. Uh, prey animals suffer from overpopulation or an overabundance. So again, we have upset the balance by wiping out the predators. So as you can see here, uh, in natural wild, the predator animals will call the sick, the weak, the young. Um, we kill the, li the largest, the ones with the special colors, the big manes, the big antlers, the ones we wanna hang their head on the wall. So we're, that myth again, that hunting is creating a balance, we create the imbalance. And then the hunters go out and claim they have to fix it when if we stopped hunting altogether, nature balances itself. So we are at the top of the food chain, so we're justified to kill them. Well, <laughs> yeah, and that's, uh, um, yeah, if you go swimming with sharks, maybe not. Um, they, but all these people, if they went uh, out into the woods with just themselves and some camping gear, they probably wouldn't survive. So we're depending on the situation we're really not the top of the food chain we just have we just uh, technology we've advanced ourselves to the point where we can um, kill every other thing that we don't like um, animals are not left injured hunters are responsible so this one is always uh, hilarious to me so unless they're tracking an animal to kill it most hunters they're not going to spend the time chasing uh, a wounded animal. It's not like in the movies where they're gonna go through the woods and look for blood specks and you know, spore and track the animal for hours and possibly days. They don't want to. And um, tomorrow we'll talk a little bit about the importance of hunt saps because if nobody's looking, why, why should they? Uh, they'll just wait in their tree stand for the next one to come by. And then that animal uh, suffers a long and horrible death. So hunting, of course, is necessary to protect agriculture. It's a big one. Animal agriculture, as you know, that's an enormous global industry and um, anything we can do to protect that is very important. So overpopulation is a term, of course, uh, used by hunters. Uh, did I lose my spot? Yeah, so um, to protect agriculture, so we, we blame wildlife for bringing in disease. Um, let's see, I think I got my notes here. Uh, we, bring, we blame agriculture and wild animals like the swine and the deer and the bison at one point for bringing in disease and affecting these animals raised for agriculture. But it, the truth is the situation that we put these animals in agriculture um, perpetuates the spread of disease. But of course we want to blame the wildlife because it's easier to, already, <laughs> it's easier to kill them than to change a system that we've, norm another cruel system that we've normalized. So hunting provides employment and revenues to poor areas. So this is a big one that um, I want to talk about a little more in a few minutes. But uh, hunters, as we know, there are some hunters who can afford to pay enormous sums to travel to Africa, Alaska, Canada to hunt big game. Um, and they claim the, con the funds go back into conservation of protecting protected areas and protect the animals. Um, so that's one of the things that I hear a lot. 
And the thing is, uh, I might have Erwin come up and talk about that in a minute, but we don't want to get stuck in the numbers because that's, that's a big problem because we don't really know how much goes back into this. Probably, you know, if you want to spend a lot of time, you might be able to find that if the, the guy who killed Cecil the Lion paid $50,000, a thousand of it went to his guides. You know, where does the rest go? Um, tracking the money, you can certainly do, but I wouldn't get bogged down in that because the, the bottom line is killing something is not conservation. Conservation is protecting um, an ecosystem in its natural, uh, in natural habitats, protecting these animals in their natural habitats. So real conservation is protecting entire ecosystems. Photo tours provide a lot more income and of course it's sustainable funding because animals aren't going away. They're not being killed as, as, as you traipse through the forest. But also you have another potential problem that more encroachment from humans and then you have human animal conflict which of course could lead to the death of an animal. Um, take for example some of these cruises that go to Alaska and they wanna walk out in the ice and see the polar bears. The polar bears get too close, it dies. So, so that's the downside of that. Hunting is culture and tradition. Again, there are many things we have done in our history that we that we no longer do. Um, and, and I think hunting is one of these that should be phased out. Hunting is sport, fun, and pleasure. Hunters believe that hunting with modern weapons is fair as prey animals have developed senses that allow them to detect and avoid predators. Yes, they've actually said that. It's hilarious. <laughs> um, it's a sport. Uh, they call it a sport as a way to pass off a cruel killing spree um, and try to normalize it and, and get people to accept it. Um, it raises funds for natural spaces. A lot of the money comes from local or national budgets and non-hunters. And again, this claim gives power, hunters power over what is done with public lands. These are lands that, that our tax money goes into. So we should have a voice in this also. Um, it protects the health and integrity of species and ecosystems. Uh, without human intervention, the balance of you know nature takes care of itself. It will balance itself. Um, also, like I just talked about, t culling uh, the the strongest and the biggest creates a problem within these within the herds, within the prey animals. We are causing more sicknesses, health issues. Animals get smaller and weaker. Hunting is therapeutic. Uh, subsistence hunting again even in remote areas if you're if you're hunting to eat whale meat is that the only thing you're eating no nowadays we have the ability to eat a lot of different foods we can transport a lot of different foods to different areas we have technology that can help us with greenhouses to feed ourselves and uh, another question I might ask of Willem later if people cannot survive in these remote areas should they live there um, and again, killing of predator animals. Uh, we have to protect species from being prey. Uh, we kill more animals than any other animals could do. But of course, it's easier to blame someone else and let them kill instead of addressing the real problem, which is ourselves. And again, that's another tough argument is because in general, humans don't want to take, uh, they don't want to take um, responsibility for the damage that we are doing. Animals can kill other animals. Non-human animals do a lot of things we would not do. So it's also maybe a little bit of a moral rights argument. What do animals do? Uh, if they do it, can we do it? Does it make it okay? Um, wild food, again, you can't feed all these people with wild animals. They would go extinct in 18 days. And um, a lot of animals that are hunted for food is, for example, pigeon and pheasant were raised in captivity also and released. And wild pigs were released in hunting in, in Belgium and are now considered pests. So again, we're bringing these species in so that we can hunt them, claim that we want to eat them because it's better than agriculture, but we're also creating an environmental disaster. Um, and we talked a little bit about hunting reducing the disease, um, invasive, and non-native species can be dam damaging to the ecosystem. So I want to touch on this one for a second. I'm going to ask Willem um, if you can come up. I'll introduce him. He's our, uh, one of our colleagues from Animal Rights. Uh, he does a lot of speaking on animal, animal rights and ethics. And I'm going to put him on the spot here <laughs> because I think this is important. This is an argument that a lot of people have. This is Willem Vermont. Thank you, Susan. 
So where do you want me to continue? Yeah, that's a very tough one, I think. What you see in, in the case of invasive species is that uh, you can have two different ethical paradigms opposed to each other. On the one hand, you have the environmental perspective. And a lot of environmental conservationists, they look at uh, the ecosystem. And they don't look at the individual having certain rights or something like that. And of course, the animal rights perspective, on the other hand, is you look at every, indiv every individual, and every individual has, as Susan just explained in the beginning, the right to life and the right to well-being. So those are opposed to each other. From, from an ecosystem perspective, you can say, okay, those invasive species, they are harmful to the original ecosystem, so we have to maybe hunt them or remove them somehow from the system so to restore the original ecosystem. But you can't do that if you believe individuals that have the capacity to suffer have rights. And I agree with that perspective. So we, it's a problem that we have created most of the time, and we have to find a solution that doesn't harm the individual and can be very hard, but yes, sometimes then you have to deal with a situation that the original ecosystem is no longer there. <laughs>